Hi everybody, it's Leonie here from WCKI and welcome back to, I think this would be our final segment on our Sloppy Joe jersey. Well, what we've done now, we've worked, we've knitted all the, the sections and we are down here now where it says to make up. I've made some notes here and I will explain all of those to you right now. We've done our sleeves, we've done our front section, we've done our back section and throughout we've worked with the term raglan as well. If I have neglected in any of the other videos to tell you what raglan is about, I do apologize. But I'm sure you would have noticed that when you did the sections, let me just show you here, this angle that we were working at, from there where we started off with our cast off, and then we worked in this shape, this diagonal shape that we've got going here. That is what's referred to, or what's called a raglan. So now, when you look at your pattern, <clears throat> excuse me, it says here to make up, sew raglan seams, leaving right back raglan seam open. Now what this means is, is that you are going to stitch your sleeves now. So if you can picture this, your right sleeve to the right front of your jersey, then the left front to your left sleeve, then the back section to your left sleeve as well. So your arm opening on the back on the right hand side that will be left open so that is what that means so when you put your stitches back onto your needle when you start knitting now for the neck band you will first have the back then the left sleeve then the front sections where we're going to pick up stitches on the one side on the left hand side then a front um, across the front and then up the right side and then you'll have the right sleeve on but when you put your stitches back onto the needle because remember I said instead of casting off I'm keeping mine all on stitch holders like I have here so now we have to get all of this back onto a needle so that we can do our neck band so when we put it back onto the needle you'll first put back on the right sleeve then you're going to put back the front stitches the left back sleeve and the back so when you start over here right side facing and a five millimeter needle you will start off with your back stitches can you see here if you have done a full cast off on all the stitches when you get to your neck band it will say right side facing using your five millimeter needles pick up a knit whichever amount of stitches you had across back neck then the stitches that you had across the top of the sleeve then this amount of stitches here around the front of the neck and that amount of stitches across the top of your sleeve again so at the end you will have your required amount of stitches on the needle so that's why I just wrote it there um, maybe just to make it a little bit easier to understand that you can this is basically that is exactly what it says here I just didn't put the stitch numbering in there because depending on the size that you make you will have the different size a uh, different amount of stitches that you will have to pick back up now I have kept all of mine on stitch holders so that is how I'm going to pick my stitches back up but that is the order in which you put the um, your stitches back onto your needle sorry I'm getting completely sidetracked here so this will be the order in which it needs to be on the needle so with right side facing that is how you'll pick it up and I will I'm gonna leave mine open on the right hand side if you leave it if you put the stitches back on you realize you've left it that the back left side is going to be open it's fine it's not a problem as long as you leave one seam open at the back because that will 
be easier because what, what happens is once you sew up the neck band you sew it all up together and you in our case we are going to fold the neck band over to neaten it up nicely and then this is only the raglan sleeves that you need to sew up now this is not this the under uh, section of the sleeve or the side seams from back and front this is only the raglan seam only the raglan seam because you will see if you go here so right back raglan seam and neck band ends that all happens in one stitching so up side and sleeve seams okay so for now only the raglan but let me show you because usually when it comes to me creating stuff i love it i have fun but this is the part that i actually disliked i can't say hate but i dislike this part because now comes the part where i have to sew up so I'm just looking for the correct crochet hook. Here we go. This comes. The, here comes the part where we have, I have to now to sew up these sections. And if you've watched any of my other videos, I've mentioned it that I actually completely dislike doing this because no matter how neatly I try to sew it up with a needle, and I'll show you the needle that you can use. No matter how neatly I try to do it. There's my needle. Can you see it's got a, a large eye that you need for it? You can see the eye there. And it is a blunt tip. So this is your wool needle or a tapestry needle that you can use. So you can either do this and then sew up your seams. Or, in my case, I am going to crochet them. Because I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks when I sew it up. So say no matter how neatly I try to make the stitches, it always looked terrible. I could see the stitching and I didn't like it. And especially if you're making something for a client, you need to get this as 100% accurate and professional as what you can get it. It's very, very important. What I've done now, I have just pinned my first section together. Can you see from here where we did the cast off? And then I just line them up neatly. I use my stitch markers just to keep it in place because I like holding onto my stuff when I uh, do this and then I always end up having pins into my hand. <laughs> so not a nice feeling. So I'm just making sure that everything is lined up neatly. You can see here's my stitch holder. I've got them on the same stitch holder just to make it slightly easier for me. This is the piece that I, that's still dangling here from when I finished my sleeve. That I will work in later. But for now, I have pinned the section that I would like to sew together. This is just to keep them in place and to make sure that I've got it lined up nicely, that my ends will meet here. And again, just to keep it professional. So what I'm going to do now, let's get my wool closer. And by the way, if you've missed the videos, I love pure gold. <laughs> just in case you missed it previously, I love it. It's just a pity we can't get too much of it at the moment. I'm just going to start with a slip knot. Now again, please remember, it is your choice. If you would like to stitch it together, if you would prefer to um, do it by hand, do it by machine, I wouldn't suggest that on certain type of wools. Um, but me, personally, I prefer the crochet bit. So what I'm going to do now, let me first take that off. And I'm using a 4mm, I think, yes. I'm using a 4mm crochet hook. That is what you usually use with double knitting. Um, but if you feel that the needle or the crochet hook is maybe a bit too thick to go in and that you, you don't want to maybe stretch the the wool or the edges you can use a three and a half millimeter but I'm going to use my four millimeter and now I'm going to try and get in as high as possible to catch my sides here can you see that I put it through both sides if I just move it away slightly there's my my sleeve and my uh, what have I got here my back section so I leave a little bit of a 
I've got like one stitch here that I'm going to leave because when I knit that I'll make sure that when I tuck in my tail ends later that if I've left a gap there I'll pick it up when I work away that end there so I've got my needle in like that so I made my little snip knot already so I'm just going to put it back onto the crochet hook there we go I'm just going to pull this through very gently that I don't damage anything and I'm just going to make a chain there we have that one now I'm just going to move my stitch marker or work around it let's see if I can now let's rather move it out otherwise we're going to get entangled here and that can be quite a mission <laughs> let's take that out now all I'm going to do now is just very gently put it through so I can just catch, you can see there, can you see where the crochet hook is in? It's right in at the top. You know that when you were making your raglan, the first stitch was a knit and then the second one was a slip and you pulled it over and when you got to the last stitch, the last three stitches, you knit two together and you knit the last stitch. Now what I'm catching here now is the first and the last stitch of the row. So I'm just going to grab the yarn bring it through like that and pull it through a little single crochet right there then i'm going to go into the next space you can put these as close together as you like making sure that we're not leaving any gaps that can show any holes or anything i'm going to flick it over now to make sure that we've that i caught everything let's purposefully just skip a bit there and let's do that one and let's do the next one okay just going to stop here let's see if i now open it gently look at that there's my raglan stitches and in there okay, i've got a little bit of a, a holiness going on there because i, I skipped a few millimeters there to show you but if it's all nicely done together look at that much much nicer so i'm going to leave you now so you can sew your raglan pieces together and then i'll meet you once all of it has been sewn together have fun just want to add something before i leave you to to carry on for too long the reason the other reason why I also enjoy the crocheting bit because now look at how neat the seam looks with my little single crochets that I've made there and now if I turn this over look at that my raglan nice and together as well as I've encountered this before that when I sew something up and I do see that it doesn't look too nice and I have to undo it to get the stitching out is quite difficult when you've sewn it now by hand whereas if I in this case now if I see I've left a little gap somewhere it's just easy I just yank this out to where I want to be and quickly crochet it up again so yes, that is, I think that's the final reason now <laughs> of why I enjoy um, or prefer to crochet it. I use single crochets. You can just do it with slip stitches. But I wanted this little ridge here, as you can see, and that's why I went with the single crochets. It's soft, so it will not scratch um, the, the new wearer of this jersey. That's still soft, but so I say you can you can decide whether you would like to just do it with a slip stitch, or in my case I used single crochets. And now I'm really going to leave you so you can finish yours. Okay, so what I've done now, I've put the the sleeve and the back stitches, I've put it back onto the needle. See here? So I'm first going to work on the back and then on the left sleeve. Now yeah it says with your right side facing 
using your five millimeter needles pick up and knit now in my case I've got for the back I've got 33 stitches at the back so across back neck and then I had 13 stitches across the top of the sleeve so I just want to show you because I kept my stitches on a um, stitch holder I'm just going to knit my 33 stitches for the back as well as for the back neck now as well as the 13 across the top of the sleeve and then I'm going to show you when it gets to this section here I'm going to need for the front 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 I'm going to need 52 stitches but I already have some stitches on a needle the center bottom section and let's have a look here over here the next 15 stitches I have these 15 stitches I already have that on a needle so I need to for the left and the right front neck I need to pick up those stitches so I'm going to show you how to do that but for now I'm just quickly going to knit across the back and the left sleeve stitches that I have here now I've got to I've obviously rejoin my wool now so what I've done I made it just a little knot I just tied it onto the wool there so it, it's just easier because I've got a few bits and bobs now when it comes to the finishing off that's dangling around so I just made a little knot there so just to keep it in place while I knit this now so I'm going to knit across the back and the sleeve the left sleeve now so when I get here I'm going to show you how to pick up the stitches going down the left front of your jersey I've now knit across the stitches for the back and for the sleeve and can you see here I don't want to yank it apart too much but there can you see there I've got a bit of a hole there that is because when I crocheted this up I didn't go all the way to the top because I had these stitches on a stitch holder so but I have these bits and pieces hanging here that I will now the tail ends that I will use to work it away and then I'll just close up that little gap there so if you've got a little gap there do not fret about that because we do have these pieces that we still need to work away that we'll use to cover that gap but now this is the section or the, these are the stitches now for the back and for the left sleeve now let's get to the front section now remember that I let me just untangle my stuff here I left the center 15 stitches on the stitch holder which means that I will have to knit and pick up stitches coming down here and then I'll have to do the same going across this end and then I will meet up again with the sleeve the stitches on the stitch holder for the right sleeve sorry I'm working back to front here so I've got to remember where I am so now let me show you now when they say cast off I said to you I'm going to keep mine on a stitch holder because when it gets to this part if you are not extremely careful on how you put the needle into the stitches and knitting these stitches you can actually make holes and that's what I don't like so proceed with caution now according to the pattern let me just do that and zoom in there we go according to this pattern the size that I need now I've done the section here where it says pick up and knit across the back neck for the top sleeve as well and now I'm at this section here for around the front neck now in my case I need 52 stitches in total now I've already got 15 stitches one five I have this here on a stitch holder so for the the right side and for the left side I must now knit and pick up stitches across here so I've done the little calculation you will see here I need a total of 52 stitches I've got 15 stitches on a stitch holder so I'm going to pick up and knit 18 stitches now on the left front then the 15 on the stitch holder and then the 19 again on the right front 
So let me show you how that is done. Let me just put that out the way. So what you're going to do now is the following. You've now got to pick up and knit the stitches across your left front. Now I'm not going to start here because remember this was on the stitch holder so that I'm just going to tuck in later. So I've got to start picking up my stitches from round about here. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your needle into the work like that and put the wool around and bring up a stitch and that's one just make sure that it's nice and snug and then you're going to do number two there you have your second stitch now I'm going to continue like that until I get to this section here and from here to here I need 18 stitches so have fun and I'll see you 18 stitches 15 stitches and in my case 19 stitches so I'm going to meet you back when I've got all my stitches onto the needle so let me just show you one more this is now where we knit up and pick up the stitches so what you're going to do is you put your needle into the section that's been completed already can you see there the camera wants to zoom in now put your wool around and oops sorry I went too close there and you bring up a stitch don't stretch it too much we don't want to cause holes here and let's just do one more put it in like that put the wool around and make another stitch there we go I'll see you when all the stitches are now on the needle we have all the stitches on the needle now the whole shebang you see it's quite a bit of them <laughs> please just make sure that you don't accidentally oops like me now yank it off I will not be impressed but there we have it now if you look at your pattern it will say that once you've got all these stitches up now and again depending on your size that you're working on you will have this amount of stitches on the needle so please just check and make sure that you have that correct amount of stitches there otherwise if you've got less than what it says here you might end up pulling a too tight around the neck and which is going to result in you not getting it over your head so please make sure that you have the correct number if you maybe have one more we can deal with one more but if you don't have enough stitches it will tend to pull a bit too tight and then you're going to battle to um, get it on now we're going to beginning with a pull one work 10 rows single rib pattern then cast off all stitches RW now that means rip wise so let's just have a look here do we actually have this yes there we go there's your abbreviation rip wise which means that if it was a knit stitch you're going to knit the stitch and then cast it off by pulling it over and then the next stitch you will pull and then pull it over so that's what it means by casting off rip wise but bear in mind don't know if you can see from this picture I think it's a oh, it is a color picture yes but I'm not sure if you can see can you see the neck a slight bit of a waviness there because they made a 10 centimeter rip then it was cast off rip wise and it was left like that now we don't want our neck like that so we're going to cast off but then we're going to fold it double and we're going to sew it in place so it forms a nice neat um, ribbing so you will make sure that when you've got to your required length like they say here uh, 10 rows single rib but take your 10 rows 
fold it in half and see if that rib is wide enough for you to fit around your neck or if that's the height that you would like. You can make it a little bit longer. Bear in mind that we're going to fold ours in half. So I'm going to do 10 rows to first see what it looks like and then I will decide whether I would like to cast it off or whether I would like to make it longer. But according to the pattern it says work 10 rows in a single rib pattern and then cast off all stitches rib wise. Now what you can do is just cast it off normally because this is the, the side that we're going to tuck inside and we're going to sew it back to our jersey on the inside. But before you, when you get there, before you cast off, just check and test it and make sure again that the length is, the width is what you would like. And then because we're going to tuck ours back in and sew it back, I would suggest that you use, if you've been using a 5mm, that for this last row, change to a 6mm needle or, or a 5.5 so that the last row is a bit looser. Because we're tucking it back in and we're going to make it fit around the neck on the inside, we can't have it pulling too tight there. So if you tend to pull a bit tight when you cast off, might I suggest then that you use a larger needle on the last row when we do the casting off. So when you, you've you done all the your required amount of rows, then do one row with a bigger needle and then cast it off. I'm going to see you right here. No, I'll see you right there. Then we'll talk about sewing the back pieces and the rib and the rest of your, your seams together. So I'm going to meet you after I've done my single rib for the neck. Have fun everybody. Please, you must have fun. <laughs> so here we have it. I have done the, the ribbing for the, the next section now. I made mine slightly longer. The pattern suggests 10 rows. I went slightly longer because I measured mine from here up to the end and it's about six centimeters because remember we are not going to leave this neck as is you can if you want to that's what the pattern says but what I'm going to do is this neck is going to be folded over like that and that's what it will look like in the end so I'm folding mine double I think it looks lovely like that so I made mine slightly longer right According to the pattern, it now says that you've got to cast off your stitches rib-wise. Let me just quickly show you that and then I'm going to disappear and quickly do this one because I've got extremely long knitting needles here and I might just poke your, your eye out. <laughs> so if we want to cast off rib-wise, I started with a pull stitch, so I'm going to pull this one. Sorry, I'm feeling rather awkward with these long needles, which I still haven't found shorter ones. The next stitch was knit. So you're going to knit the row as if you are doing a normal single rib row. But in this case, we are just going to do the casting off now. So then you pull that one over. The next stitch was a pull. So we're just going to pull that stitch, change the wool, or the position rather, and then pull that stitch over. So that's what it means to cast off rib wise, RW, oops, on your pattern. I'll see you once I've got all the stitches off. So all the stitches are off the needle now. Can you see it? There's a bit of stretch in the neck as well. I'm quite happy with this. So now when I'm done, I'm going to fold this in and stitch it to the inside so it will give me a nice rounded finish here so what you will do now remember we've got all these pieces sewn together except for the the one whether you left open the right or the left hand side there's mine still open so what we're going to do now all of this gets stitched sewn up crocheted up in one go so let's just sort this out here sorry i'm I know I'm off camera a little bit so i'm gonna quickly get this all together 
Where's my, there we go. So I will now go and do this last bit of raglan. There's that. I'll stitch this up all the way to the top now. Then all that's left to do will be the side seams of the, the jersey as well as the, the underarm of your sleeve. And that, ladies and gents, is how easy it is to do your sloppy joe jersey. I hope you've enjoyed this. All I'm going to do now is sew up this bit here. I'm going to flip open my neck and tuck that in and sew that to the inside and neaten up the jersey and then that's it. It's off to the client. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Please do come and show me what yours looks like. You can of course now there's a variation on this that you can do. Let's say for instance now we've done up all the sewing. Let me just sort this out here. There we go. And you decide that it's maybe a bit too dull or a bit too plain for you. Then you can go, you can either embroider on your jersey. You can crochet little flowers and embellish your top. You can even add beads, pulls. This is a basic pattern. This is a standard one. You can have so many variations on this. With whatever you can think up, that's what you can do. You can knit stripes in. You can make a multicolored jersey. Go ballistic with your basic pattern as long as you have fun. <laughs> See you again soon.